happy Sabbath everyone and uh, we are going to continue with what we started last Sabbath uh, we reap what we sow and today we're going to look at uh, part two and with that uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 7 <clears throat> verses 15 to verse 20 Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to verse 20 we're going to look at uh, some passages here just from Jesus and then we'll go and look at the passage from the book of James. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So here, when we look at verse 15, and, and keep in mind that what we had looked at uh, at the last message we gave was that everything was created according to its kind. But here we see something that is different. Beware of false prophets. So these false prophets are not according to its kind. They have a different agenda. They have something different than the tree of life principle or what is supposed to be according to its kind. So they are false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. So here we look and see the way the description is given. <clears throat> These aren't people that are according to its kind. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather gapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Again, the same principle, according to its kind. This here is telling us very clearly that this was not according to its kind. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit and a bad tree bears bad fruit. So here is clearly laid out according to its kind. A bad tree and a good tree, both give its fruit according to its kind. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So if you are not the good tree and you are not bearing fruit according to the good tree, then there's the result. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. So therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. So there it is very clearly laid out that by their fruit, you will, by their fruit, by their fruits, you will know them is they will reveal whether they have the tree of life principle in them or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil principle in them. And the reason that they are, um, the re I think the reason why the Aussie mentioned that they are not according to its kind is because they appear to be sheep. In, they appear to be um, clothed in sheep's clothing. So they appear to be good but they are really a bad tree. So that duality is very deceiving and that's not according to its kind. Anything according to its kind has a singularity that is not a duality. And with that, we will now go and look at uh, in Luke chapter six, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> Luke chapter six, verses 43 to 45. <clears throat> For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So in verse 45, we are clearly again given a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, brings forth good. This again represents the tree of life principle. And then an, an evil man 
out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. That is, people living by the principle from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So what that means is, whatever principle we have inside of us, whatever principle we have behold and we are living by, this is going to be reflected in the way we speak and live and it will be demonstrated very clearly whether we have the tree of life principle in us or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. With that now, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 12. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 12 and, and see here something that Jesus lays out from verse 33 to verse 37. <clears throat> Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. So here Jesus clearly wants to be clearly demarcated or delineated that we should do this. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, which is only through Jesus Christ, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit. Keep going. Yes. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you brood of vipers, or you brood of serpents, uh, represent uh, Satan's principle. How can you, being evil, that is living by the principle of good and evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring, brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. And we've just covered this in, 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 for both the verses. But I say to you that every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Now, with that, let's go to James chapter 3. With that in mind, let's go to James chapter 3, and we will go all the way from verse 1 down to verse 12. James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, all able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Okay, now what we're going to do is pay particular attention in this connection from verses 9 to verse 12. From verses 9 to verse 12. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made into the similitude of God. So keep this in mind, what, what James has just written, okay? With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Now, I'm going to say something here that might shock you. What we have done, we have attributed to God the principle represented by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then we turn around and say that God speaks blessings and curses on humanity. That he arbitrarily blesses 
and he arbitrarily curses humanity. He arbitrarily uh, does good for them and then he arbitrarily punishes them. There is the principle. With it, we bless our God and Father and with it, we curse men who have been made known, made in the similitude of God. So there's that principle, which means clearly that God does not operate by that principle that we have attributed to him, that we have from the scriptures <clears throat> come up with this erroneous understanding and made God into something that he is not. He does not live or operate by the principle of death represented by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He only represents the principle of the tree of life. And the tree of life principle is nothing else but the very essence of who God is. And God is love. Now let's look at verse uh, 11 and 12. Um, I didn't read 10 yet. Go ahead. Uh, out Sorry. of the mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both water and fresh, both salt water and fresh. So I want us now to just go back and look at this again. Okay, from 9 to 12, I'm going to emphasize this. With with it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God out of the same mouth. And dear ones, make sure that what is laid out here, we, from the scriptures, don't attribute to God the very principle that is laid out here by James. And tragically, the whole world all believers in God have made this horrible mistake of attributing to God exactly what is stated out here. And I'll read it again. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things not ought to be. So when we say that, when, that God blesses people, the good people he rewards, the good people he, he takes care of, and the bad people he ends up killing them. And we go through this throughout the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, and pick these things out. And this is what we have done. But here we are clearly told, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things not ought to be. So God is not the way we have concluded because we have erroneously interpreted scripture. And the only person that gives us the true revelation of God is Jesus Christ. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grape tree figs? There's no spring. It's both salt water and fresh. So nothing like this comes out of God. What he has stated here that applies to us also has the same application to God. With that now, I want us to look at Galatians chapter 6. We'll just go to, I had another passage, but we won't look at that. We'll just go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. And we we'll look at verses 7 and 8. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now the first portion of what uh, Paul has written there, or narrated, look at what he's saying. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. So which means to say, really, that's what it means to say. We are deceived and God is mocked if we fail to understand God is we are deceived and God is mocked if we fail to understand the law of reaping and sowing extremely important and we've done two messages on this 
extremely important. If we do not understand the law of reaping and sowing, then we are deceived and God has been mocked. Because here, now, Paul continues. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So whatever we sow, that is what we're going to reap. There's no question or doubt of that. For he who sows to his flesh, the principle of good and evil, the law of good and evil that we have inherited from Adam and Eve, if we sow to the flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. Not some arbitrary act of God. The very principle that's laid out, this is what we are going to end up with. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And it, it's kind of difficult for us to grasp these principles because we have been so ingrained in the first Adam with his understanding that he inherited, uh, that he uh, got when he obeyed the serpent and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And humanity has inherited that same mindset. And the only person, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, is the only one that delivers all of humanity from that corrupted mindset. And my prayer for all of us is that we will allow Jesus to deliver us from our erroneous understanding of God's character of agape love.